All right, we're here with the champ, world champion, Vito Arugia. Vito, congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, awesome. So where to, where to begin? I think first about the, your interviews before before every, before all the wrestling got started. You make your way into the arena. You're taking a look at it, and you were saying that a lot of that had to do mindset, sports psych. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I um, I like to see the arena kind of, you know, as soon as I can, because I think it really helps to, like, you know, get a good mental image of what it's going to look like when you're out there and kind of put yourself in those positions and just make, like, your, I want to say, like, imagine imagination, but, like, you know, the, the those, like, visions that you create in your head, you want to make them as realistic as possible, right? Um, at least that that's what I like to do. I like to, you know, put myself there, uh, see myself wrestling there because you know the mat's the same every time so in a sense it's easy but you know uh, it's a different aspect when you are on that mat and you look up and see the lights and the crowd and you know it's a different stage every time and a different atmosphere so I just like to get in there and, and take a look and it worked out that at the end of one of my workouts I was just supposed to kind of sit there for 20 minutes so i was like can we just go look at the arena and so that's why i was all like bundled up in my sweats and stuff but yeah nice now is that something you've always done or something that you've started doing more over time uh i'd say i picked it up um i only started really doing sports psych and, and kind of giving that the mental aspect of the sport like the attention to deserve probably within the past year and a half um you know, I think that's where a lot of my, a lot of the little shifts, uh, you know, kind of come from. Um, but I was, but yeah, like I, I, I think that's a really good one that I like to do is because I, I imagine how matches go and like the movements, right? But putting yourself, uh, you know, what are you gonna feel when you stand there? What do, you, what do you want to feel when you're there? Uh, are things that you know I like to think about. Nice. What are some of those other little shifts that you were saying? Uh, I guess, I guess just, I've been told multiple times by everybody like, Oh, you look like you're doing like, you've gotten so much better. Like what, what, what happened? What did you do? And I keep having to tell everybody, like, I don't, I don't know how much things I really changed. You know, it's more or less just a different approach, but like, my skill set, my athleticism. The only difference is, you know, obviously I'm from 25 to 33. So like I have a little bit more energy, a little bit more power, but it's not, you know, my techniques are the same. So it's like, it's still the same guy, same wrestler I was. It's just now I'm doing things a little bit differently. Right. Any, what are some of the specific things maybe different and what, what you're focusing on that maybe you weren't doing before, or maybe certain things you tell yourself? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, w I was very inconsistent, uh, I think was my issue beforehand. Um, you know, I had that ability to go out and perform at a really high level. You know, I, my technique, my understanding of the movements of wrestling, I think is really good. Uh, you know, comparative to like the world stage, even, uh, you know, I think I have a good feel for wrestling. You know, it just it just clicks. Um, and that's something that I've I've gotten over. You know, the entirety of my career, it just kind of built up. Um, but the thing was right, like I could go out there and compete as this person who, uh, you know, is like world caliber, one of the best of the best. And then I could also go out there and compete like, oh, this guy would be lucky if he all American. Right. So that was that was where I was at for a long time it was just this kind of place of inconsistency where I knew I was so good, but I just didn't perform well sometimes. I didn't know why. But uh, then I started looking at like, you know. And it was it was a little tough, too, because like I didn't like. I I also like am terrible at like, uh, I guess I couldn't tell you know, what was different each time. I just kind of showed up to the tournament and be like, okay, you know, this time I was too like juiced up and over frantic and, and like just 
everything was too much. And sometimes I would go out there and I'd be like too slow and relaxed. And then I didn't have a good enough reaction time. Right. So uh, one of the best things that I did to kind of deal with that was I just thought of, you know, what would be my ideal type? You know, what, what do I want actually? Like what would I think would work best for me? Uh, and kind of where I came, came to is like this point of like calm, but sharp, right? Like I, I, uh, imagine like, like, a like, like an old Western, like a gunslinger, like they stand in there to duel and a drop of a pin, it's like draw and shoot. Like he's standing there, like he's not tense. Like he's not like flexing nice and relaxed or, or, you know, the other, uh, like thing I imagine is like a, like a samurai, right. Uh, where, you know, like if you ever, if you ever held a sword, like a sword's pretty heavy, right. So there's like a lot of strength that goes into like, you know, fighting with a sword. But at the same time, like I can't flex because then I can't move. Right. So I don't want to be too much. I don't want to be like just waving it around crazily. Right. But you also like, so you have to be precise and pick your spots and find your openings and be ready to counter on a, on a notice. Right. So that's kind of the, the, the feeling I want to have when I wrestle is just like calm. Nothing is, you know, I'm not giving one thing too much attention over another. I'm just at a very like almost dull state. Uh, and that's why like when I wrestle, I kind of am almost in like an unconscious state, right? I'm not thinking about anything. Nothing, nothing's really going on in my brain. Um, and I'm able to do that because of, the skill and technique that I have. Right. Uh, but, um, that paired with, so the calm, but paired with the sharp, the, the just heightened reaction time, which feeds into what I do well. Uh, it, it, it speaks to like my skill set because obviously my speed and my reaction time are some of my best weapons. So, you know, leaning into the things that I'm good at more, helping me perform at a higher level more consistently, if that makes sense. Right, and having that mental cue of of, of the sword or of the gunslinger, it, it would seem like that would put you more into that like right side of the brain where you're more like feel, flow. Like it, it, it gets you, it's able to pull you right back to like, this is where I want to be when I'm competing. Like having that mental image, basically. Yeah, that, that was, that's kind of the, that left first right side of the brain was something that I was, uh, that I did some work with was just tapping into that right side, right? So, and getting more into like the artist flow of it, right? It's not so much like go out there, post, grab, leg, here, like step by step, like mechanical, which most people are taught to wrestle, right? Like that's usually how you're taught to wrestle because it's a, it's a easier way to pick it up. But if you have to think through all of those steps every time you do anything, and then obviously in a dynamic sport like wrestling where your opponent's coming up with other countermeasures, so now you're in the middle of these actions, you have to wait. You have to be like, well, wait now, stop. I must do this because he did this, but then he's going to do this. So then I have to do this. You can see how like it creates a lot of thinking in a sport where things happen in fractions of a second. So it's much easier for me and leans into what I'm good at to turn my brain off, turn my body on, and just all the wrestling that I've built up over the years just happens, right? My body feels and knows what to do, right? It's kind of ingrained, right? Um, and I think that's, you know, one of the keys to kind of the success I've had is just like, I don't think about wrestling in the moves. I think of it as like the the, the flow, the dance, right? How can I disrupt what he's doing? How can I take control of the of the pace of the tempo of 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 the dance and and kind of make him do what I want? Right. Oh, that makes sense. Right. So yeah. it's seven seven. Now bringing you right to a specific situation. Seven seven world finals. You're down right there. Right. What's going on in your mind? What are you telling yourself? I didn't even realize I was down seven seven. <laughs> the whole. <laughs> 
all that's time. It's like, well, keep scoring. If I have more points, it's pretty. If right. you boil it down, if I have more points, I win. <laughs> so the objective is to score points. I don't have to worry myself with if I'm winning or if I'm losing because if I score too many points, then the match ends, <laughs> you know, like. Which yeah. very which very frequently is the case in your in your matches. Well, leg laces are just. Best. Pretty cheaty, I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm cheating sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, like they're the moment I'm down 7-7, seven, seven, I'm losing. Or the moment I'm up 7-4 or 7-2 after the initial thing. Or they challenged and I was down 7-4. I don't pay too close of attention to the score. Uh, the time, maybe I do, right? Because there's some strategy behind that. Um, when it comes to freestyle and shot clock, there is a little bit of nuance, a little bit of strategy. Uh, but the score for me, I don't perform well if I'm switching from offense to defense. So I stay on offense. And if he tries to get his offense going, I might let him so that I can then counter him and throw and throw him off his rhythm even more, right? Uh, you know, so that's – I'm always offensive-minded, and that works to my strengths and my my ability, right? Absolutely. That, that That's perfect because, yeah, you don't, want, you don't want to have too much in your head. You don't want to be preoccupied with the score. And like you said, you're aware of the time, but you're not dwelling on it, right? There's a difference between being overly focused on versus being aware for tactics, right? It's like – you know, match starts, and you have, you know, a couple of like 30, 20, 30, and not like hard numbers, but like a little bit of the first of the matches to feel. So I look, I throw, you know, I'm throwing like my fakes, seeing his reaction, and now I can plan a little bit like, okay, I'm going to go here, he's doing that. Now I'm going to go bang, bang. And then... I know he'll run and chase that and then I can come around to the other side. Right. But those are actions that I drill and practice more so than things that I'm thinking of for the first time on the spot, you know? Um, and then, so you feel in the first little bit and then I'm going to, to, to get them. Uh, and then, you know, if there's 10 seconds left in, in the first period, I'm not, I'm not going to go get them. It's a new, it's a pretty mutual understanding. Like, Hey, like no more points because I don't want to give up some silly two at the end of the period when I could have just not gone. Right. And it's like, if I'm winning, if I'm losing, it doesn't matter at the end of the first because we have a whole nother period. Right. And then almost every time there's a sprint off the start of the second period, someone's trying to take the, take the pace, take the tempo, kind of establish their dominance of the period, get the other guy on the shot clock. Right. And now you're you're putting yourself in the driver's seat. Right. Um, and then obviously you have the last 30 second of the match sprint. Right. So and that's important for me because I'm winning. Right. So I know he's like I don't have to be I don't have to score. I just have to stop whatever he's doing. And that doesn't mean I and, you know, it's it's super easy to fall back into into certain you know habits. Right. Because. You know, I gave up that silly step out, um, which, you know, I tried to circle back again, but then that gives the opportunity for them to go caution one, right? And it's like, that's silly, but, you know, I shouldn't have put myself there. I should have stayed and fought the whole time. So, but coming back now, it's like, okay, there's however many 10 seconds, whatever seconds left on the clock. I have to stand right here and, and fight them, right? You know, so knowing the time and then the strategies is, is helpful, especially like on the highest levels. Like it, it's, you have to be able to read the clock and, and know what's coming in certain times. But the score to me is almost less important because it, it might, if I'm down by four with 30 seconds left, maybe I'm looking for a big throw or maybe I'm, I know that I have to go take down to turn to win. But outside of that, like, I'm always looking to score. I'm always looking to fall into turns. It's just like, you know, 
yeah. <laughs> no, it make, makes sense. You like you said, you got it. You have to know what's coming, so you're you're mentally and physically prepared for it. That's oh yeah. Great. So so now talk about being in a unique situation with your dad as a two time world champ, Olympic bronze medalist. I've been over to his club. I spoke there. Obviously, great guy. How has that formed you as a wrestler? So I get first, I guess, talk about the pressures of of that, and then also how he's helped you, not just technically, but also mentally to to succeed at different levels. So talk about the pressures, and then the um, and then how he's helped mentally. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, the pressures didn't really like. Uh, when I was younger, it was almost like a. I couldn't, you, you can't see the top of the mountain. So you're like, you don't know how tall it is right. or it's like super far in the distance. So you're like, Oh, that's a big mountain over there. But like, you're not, when you stand at the base of it, it looks way bigger, <laughs> you know? So when I was younger, I didn't really like, yes, my dad was two time world champ. He was an Olympian. I'm like, that's cool. He's like the best wrestler I've ever met because of the awards he has. Right. But all the moves that he would show were pretty basic high crotch, single leg, double leg, fireman, like the things that everybody learns. Like he's not teaching me anything different from anyone else, right? So I'm like, what, well, you know, whatever. Uh, but then I obviously grow up and uh, I get on the senior level myself. Uh, I've been on the senior level for, you know, years at this point. Um, and kind of the better I've gotten and the more I've progressed and kind of the more onto the world stage that I've kind of crept on uh, international tournaments and all that. Um, the more that when I wrestle with my dad now, I have more appreciation for his technique and for like his perspective, right? Because not like his, his experience didn't really apply to folk style, like high school wrestling. He was too good to understand. <laughs> like, you know, it's even college, like it didn't, it wasn't like super applicable. But the things he's saying, like, people are gonna do this now. And I'm like, no, they're not. But now they are at the world stage, they do. Right. So he was uh, you know, it was uh it was a very roundabout way to get there, but now it's like, oh, uh, now that he's not my coach and not like in charge of my training, like he's just a really good you know, person to reach out to for like advice on certain things. Right. Uh, but now we're also at a point where our styles are nothing alike, completely different. Right. So it's like, I have to almost filter through what's helpful and what's not to me. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that, uh, that appreciation grows the more and more that, cause he won his world medals in, 91, 95, and third in 92 Olympics, I think. So he was, you know, early 20s, uh, like early to late 20s. So he was, he was a two-time world champ. Uh, he was, a, he was a world champ and bronze medalist, like, you know, when he was like, I want to say like 22. <laughs> and here I am 24. So I'm like, and first world title yes but like i'm behind you know like this dude is this dude was killing it so um and he started late too right Relative, i mean relatively he, late. <laughs> yeah i mean like he he started when yeah like the equivalent of like starting in high school here you know um which is yeah definitely pretty impressive but he uh but yeah so i mean there was definitely that that pressure growing up, like, oh, like, I want to be as good as my dad. And then as I get closer, I'm realizing that the distance is further away. Uh, so, which made it even more kind of, you know, um, meaningful to get this first title, just to show that, you know, I, I, am, I am on the right road and I am, you know, working towards my goal and I am getting results. So there's a lot of good, a lot of good to come out from it as well. Um, so to know I'm, I'm, you know, not quite there, but I'm, I am slowly, you know, building my way, way up there. Right. Excellent. And then how has he helped mentally? Would you say, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I think he gave me unrealistic standards of the wrestling world. 
uh, you know, he taught me obviously to be, and, and these are very kind of situational things, right. But to be critical on my own wrestling, right. To the point where I think I wrestled pretty poorly, but I'm still the world champion. So it's like, what, who, yes, my wrestling's not perfect, but it's still the best in the world. So what, what, so, but that, that criticalness is also what kind of drives me as, you know, someone who it sometimes is a perfectionist, uh, especially when it comes to the thing like my, my craft, right? So I try to strive for that perfect. And there, you know, you get glimpses of it sometimes where you hit a move and it's just like, that was perfect. Right. And chasing that perfectionism. Um, and, you know, like, <laughs> There's a funny thing with unrealistic standards because you like from what everything from my dad and, and, you know, what I've, I've kind of put together over, you know, my wrestling career, like, you know, a world champion is someone who's like absurdly good at wrestling. Right. And I'm like, I don't have that reference. Right. Like I've wrestled and recently I wrestled the world champion in the Budapest tournament and I've wrestled Gilman who's a world champion. Right. But like, it's hard to get like a reference from, for you to like, the rest of the world, you know? So I'm like, you know, there's probably someone out there who's just like way better than me, but you know, you, you get out there and you put your best on the line. And yeah. It turns out mine's pretty good. <laughs> That's right. Now I had your dad on one of our shows before and he was saying something, this was, I guess, after the Olympic trials or something about, about telling you just to, to, to not get too fired up before the match. And how it's, you know, you don't get, you don't get fired up to go to school. You know, you grab your lunchbox you get over there. Did he, did he tell you something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Now that you say that. Yeah. He, I mean, he's got a lot of those like metaphors in him. Uh, but yeah, he's, he, he gives a lot of advice. So I, I, some of it, some of it really does stick. And then some of it's in and out one here, but it's because it's tough because it, we do have that, like that uh father coach you know relationship too so you know sometimes you listen to your dad sometimes you don't so i mean like it's tough uh but no he does he does give good advice generally you know um when it comes to wrestling especially um but yeah just another part of it is just like me kind of using my resources and, and and getting there but also figuring it out for myself sometimes too so of course of course. All right. So what's the plan for the, the weight descent this year for 57 next year? Uh, not finalized, but you know, I think I'm, I'm probably going to go 33 for the season uh, and, you know, make my descent down to 57 afterwards for the Olympic trials. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Where right. now I'll, uh, because of my, world medal i'll be sitting in the finals if, if i do choose to which i i'm pretty sure i'll end up going 57 uh um you know i i will be sitting in the semis uh for the Olympic trial finals all right how long do you want to compete for <laughs> so i can't that's great great answer what was the what was the toughest part about winning a world championship I don't know. I mean, when you boil it down, it's it's another tournament, right? It's like it's all hard, but it's all easy at the same time. Time, because this is what I do. Like this is this is what I this is the only thing I do. This is the only thing that I'm really good at. So in that sense, it's easy to to you know have to go get dressed and go lose weight is way easier for me to do than someone else you know so if i told some random dude i woke him up at 6 a.m and was like hey put on a bunch of sweats go down to the gym and start running for an hour it's like he'd be like what no so it's easier for me um well how about I'll, re I'll rephrase it was there anything surprising or any any challenges that you weren't expecting or even something slightly different um when you got there no no it not like another tournament, like another day on the job, but like it's, it's, uh, you know, the level of the competition is there. Um, 
you know, I'd say, uh, I think I may like, maybe not, I don't want to say overestimated. I, I think I, I've very fairly estimated most of my opponents. Like I knew obviously that the skill level was going to progress as the further I went to the tournament. Uh, and you know, I had watched some technique and I was just confident that I had answers for kind of everyone. Um, and then the, the actual wrestling part's the easiest part, <laughs> right? I don't think I just hit autopilot, go do the thing that I, that I do. And then, you know, uh, the, the wrestling just happens. Um, it makes sense. I, I, I'll leave you with this question. So the, you, you were saying there, it's, it, it is another tournament, but it's not another tournament. How do you mentally like make sense of that where you keep yourself level? Like, obviously, you know, this is what you've been training for. This is the world championship. It's, it's, it's clearly, it's not just another tournament, but at the same time, you have to treat it in a lot of ways, like it's another tournament. So you don't get overwhelmed. And so you don't stop doing the things that got to got you to this point. How do, how do you balance the two of those? How do you make sense of that in your mind? You know, if you, and this is something that I do, you know, kind of every tournament. Um, the only time I really need to think about the tournament is the day before, the day of, and, you know, the day after. Uh, or the only times I really need to think about the wrestling and the strategy and, like, you know, go to work. Um, you know, I had to put my boots on and go to work or is the day before the day of and the day after. And even when I do go to work, um, it's like, I have breaks in the day. So, you know, I wake up, I go do the thing. I, I wrestle and say, I have a, a break, you know, a couple hours, come back to the hotel. I'm not thinking about wrestling when I come back to the hotel. Because I'm gonna go back to work. I'm I'm gonna get back on the job, and I'm there, and I know that all the work is already done. You know, there's nothing I can do now to change to change it. Uh, you know, that's not necessarily true. There's things you could do to mess it up, but you know, my my uh, I guess, yeah, I just uh, I kind of conserve the 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 energy that I have. You know, if I if I were to think about my matches and think about them like 24 7 for the whole week leading up to it you know i'd almost be like burnt out by the time the tournament came so i make sure to make room for things that you know i enjoy doing and hanging out with the people around me and just enjoying my time as well uh and i think that helps me relax and kind of be comfortable and you know those are things where you you compete your best when you're when you're you know not hating life and you're just you know laughing and having fun with your friends you know so uh and it makes it much easier when you have you know i had yanni as my training partner i had frank i had mike here uh so you know we were just hanging out <laughs> and then i went and wrestled for a day came back made weight went to bed woke up and then i had to wrestle later that night and that was it so yeah now yeah. okay Okay, I lied. Last question. You got me, got me thinking again. So now, what, what is it like that day, knowing the championships are tomorrow? You had that at the NCAAs, you had that at the Worlds. Now you spend all that time in your mind. Basically, it, in, in essence, a lot of the hard work is done. The majority of the hard work is done. Of course, the finals is hard work. But what what are you telling yourself? Uh, I don't... Ideally, I've I've run... I've run through thinking about it prior, like months, weeks ago. You know, I don't have to think about it now because I already have before. So not like I'd be like, you know, beating a dead horse, but like hopefully I'm already prepared at that point. Um, It's kind of where I was getting at. Like, I don't need to think about it now because I've already thought about it so much before. Oh, so, nice. yeah. No, it makes sense. World champion, Vito Ruja. Awesome, man. Great stuff. Looking forward to hanging with you next week at Ithaca. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you now enjoy the finals. Got some more good matches coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Thanks for having me. Take care.